Hey, uh, welcome to uh, CoachParker.org's uh, presentation on um, KYA Football's Coaching Clinic. Uh, this is the second slide in parent communication uh, that we talked about uh, earlier. Uh, just to continue on that, oh, and I'm Coach Steve Parker. Sorry, I'm getting used to this uh, new Logitech webcam uh, and uh, doing these video blogs. So uh, bear with me as I uh, get better at this. But uh, yeah, this is the second slide in my parent communication area. Um, and really, uh, this next point is a big point in, in parent communication is to choose a good team parent. Uh, I've had some bad ones in the past and I've had some great team moms and team managers and there is a huge difference in the ease of coaching a team when you have a good team parent. The one thing that I will say uh, is to definitely choose a team parent that is very, very social, that likes to communicate, likes to mingle with uh, the other families, talk to them. Uh, promote you. They should be your biggest cheerleader on, on the team. Uh, they're very well organized and in today's environment with technology, they should be very, very good with uh, social media, texting, emailing. Uh, look, if they can't email people, that's, that's uh, probably a first no-no. It's so much easier to email and text folks than try to do a call sheet that we used to do 10, 15 years ago. Uh, definitely set up reminders uh, in a calendar is uh, makes a huge deal. So just make sure that they're as technically literate as probably the most technical literate person on your team. That way that that all kind of meets there. And the reason I say, you know, they need to be able to do this is a lot of better teams really focus on the team manager, team parent, team mom person, and make sure that they have a very good one that does all this stuff. And so if you get on another team or you're a new team and your team mom does not do that, there's some issues there with grumbling. So just FYI on that. Uh, the other big point on the team parent is make sure they're not your wife. Uh, a lot of coaches do that. It, I don't think that really should should be uh, kind of a standard just because I think you get more information uh, from families when they talk to a third party. Uh, your wife, is they feel like is hooked to you and they don't want to talk to your wife because it'll get right back to you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's usually not a very good thing. The other thing that you want to think about is to, when you're to choosing a team parent. I like to choose a team parent that I know and that has been on the team before and that their son plays quite a bit. I've had a team parent um, that I didn't know. Their son did not play very, very much. There's sometimes team parents uh, will feel like because they're a team parent, their son, their child should play more on the team, and this one team parent did, and that became an issue. So, uh, if you got a, a person that you've known for a while and uh, they've worked with you before, definitely I would choose somebody you're experienced with, and that goes just like a job interview or anything else. I mean, um, you know. Pick the people that you feel comfortable with uh, uh, on that point. Um, the other thing is just like choosing team parents uh, to keep the communication good, choose good assistant coaches. I mean, if you choose an assistant coach who's a total jerk, uh, you'll need to make sure that, you know, he's not really uh, dealing with parents that much, right? So uh, how you choose coaches and and, and, and how they communicate with parents and the players uh, really gets back to this parent communication. Uh, your assistant coaches really need to be uh, knowledgeable about football. And I know a lot of folks pick them, you know, just because they want to volunteer. And I've done that in the past. But if you do that, you need to make sure that you give them enough information that they can coach their, their group and not just stand around and talk. Uh, because that, that'll become an issue. Uh, the other thing when you pick your assistant coaches, make sure that they are in line with what you're trying to accomplish. 
uh, and that they're going to follow your plan, that they don't have their own agenda that they're trying to promote. Um, you know, if that's the case, it's probably not going to work out when you want to do this and they're arguing about it. I've seen that on the sidelines. So you really want to try to pick coaches that understand, one, you're the captain and you're sailing the ship and you've got the final say and that, uh, that you know, and that you're, you know, what you put into place is what's going to be run. Now, you might be a coach that's going to let some of that go and not be as worried about that. Uh, over the years, I've gotten more to where I'm, I've got the system, I've got my schemes, both offense, defense, and special teams, and I want you to run this, and I give them basically a coach's manual, and they run that. And if you do that, you've got to make sure they're willing to, uh, to let you do that. Uh, so really, you know, make sure you, you uh, pick a good team parent and a, your good assistant coaches that uh, are, are going to follow what you, uh, you know, what your philosophies are. And then, you know, you've done all that. You've had good communication. You've had your parent meeting. You've, you've done this whole thing. And, but you still have that difficult parent. And it definitely comes up on every team. There's maybe one or two difficult parents that are upset about whatever reason. And really, you want to know how to handle them. Well, this is a, you know, straightforward, honest communication is the best way to handle for it. Don't let it fester. Don't ignore it. Uh, communicate early. Uh, if they've got a problem, let the, the, the parents know how they can reach you through your cell phones and emails so they can get in touch with you early so these problems don't fester. Uh, if they've got a problem and, uh, you know, they've emailed and talked to you, you know, uh, don't ignore it. You've got to ask yourself and your staff, you know, is it us? Are we doing anything wrong? Can we, you know, talk to the parent, help this out? Uh, can we talk to the player? Is there something we need to do with play time? You know, really look back at yourself in the mirror and say, okay, is there a problem? I mean, sometimes there is, and it, it look, it, you know, they might have given you a little nudge in the right direction. Sometimes it's not. And so you've got to say, is this really, after you look at yourself, is this a valid issue? Uh, is it a small issue? Does it need to be addressed? Uh, and then you may or may not need to do that. Uh, you definitely, when talking to them, can empathize with their issue. I mean, my two sons have played other sports, did not play a lot. I can certainly say uh, uh, in my youngest son did not play a lot in basketball and sat on the bench quite a bit. Uh, you know, did I like that? Was I happy about it? No, I can certainly say that. But the reason I'm talking about this is usually the parents that are going to complain to you are the kids that aren't playing because in previously what I said, what the parents want, they want their child to be playing. So you need to, uh, you need to know, you know, when, if you're not playing kids and you're up 42 to zero, uh, you're probably getting a complaint the next day. And that's really not a difficult parent. They're just letting you know, hey, I want my, my kid to play. Um, you know, when you have an issue that goes further and they're just continuing for whatever reason and they won't stop, uh, you know, ask your team mom and parent to help you follow up with them. I like to have a witness with my team mom as I'm communicating to that person to communicate via email too. I let my league commissioner know or the league or whatever your process there is with your league and let them know you're having this difficult time with this particular parent. And, uh, you know, if it comes down to it, you can bring your league commissioner over and have them meet with the parent also. And then you and the league and the parent can determine the best course of action. Sometimes the parents go directly to the league and then that kind of causes a little issue. Don't get so upset with that. Many parents don't know how that works or they feel uncomfortable talking to you. Uh, just don't take it out on the child. Remember the child's kind of in the middle of it. The parents got a whole nother uh, thing going on. Usually the child is okay with what whatever's going on and the parent is 
kind of maybe sometimes over the top. But whatever you're doing, be cordial, be empathetic, understand what's going on. And then, uh, you know, if it gets to a point that you have to be a little bit more uh, straightforward, you certainly can. But the really, the big thing in the whole difficult parent issues, they want to be heard, they want some empathy, and they want you to adjust some things. And it doesn't take that much to adjust a few things if you can. And uh, if it doesn't work out that way, you've uh, always got, you know, our KYA league officials or your league officials to help you get through that. Uh, so that's that's really how uh, I've dealt with a difficult parent in the past. You usually have one on the team, uh, but usually you can you can get that to settle down with just good, effective communication. Uh, so, and we'll tell you in the next slide some good communication tools that you can use as a team and as a team parent to effectively communicate with your parents. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this uh, presentation slide, and uh, this is Coach Steve Parker with CoachParker.org um, signing off. Remember, play for fun and winning is funner.